Camaro 60 I currently have in my truck has been nothing but great to me. It's pretty much just a low mile rebuilt 4L60 with a Corvette servo. And of course I have a trans cooler as well, just with those few combinations. This transmission has actually been pretty reliable. Haven't had any issues whatsoever, but I know as soon as I get this thing boosted, that can all change. Cause I know currently with my setup, I'm making about 320 to the wheels, 310, something like that. Once it's boosted, I'll be making about 550 to the wheels, but I think that would definitely be pushing the 4060 too much. So I'd rather just get rid of it, put in a 4L80, a built one at that. If you guys wanna go ahead and check out that video, I recently rebuilt my 4L80 with an HD2 shift kit as well. Those videos are right here. But nonetheless, you guys know the topic of today's video. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys everything you need for the conversion. All right, all that being said, guys, welcome back to another video, man. You guys know the deal today. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick little breakdown of exactly what you need to install a 4L80 into a single cab or any other type of truck similar to these. If you currently have a 4L60 and you're wanting to go to the 4L80 as I am in my truck right here, I'm gonna go ahead and break down everything you need for the 4L80 conversion, prices, everything, you name it, man. But that being said, man, let's go ahead and get to it. As you can see right here, this is the 4L80 that's gonna be going into my truck. It was recently rebuilt and we also added a HD2 shift kit. If you guys wanna go ahead and check out those videos, they'll be right there. But yeah, like I said, currently, mine still has the 4L60. In a few days, gonna get started on doing that conversion. Gotta get the 4L60 out. And then with the 4L80, I know a lot of people wanted to see the six speed, but as far as price wise, it just didn't make sense. For the six speed, I would have spent around or over 3,000 versus the 4L80. I was able to pick this one up and find it for about $400, which I just couldn't pass up on. And if you guys watched the rebuild video, this transmission was in great shape. And just to go ahead to add another reason as to why I went with the 4L80. For those who know, my C6 is already a six speed. So if I wanna have some manual transmission fun, just gotta hop into this thing. But you guys know, man, this is currently my daily. I know I said I wasn't gonna be modding it anytime soon, but you know, when opportunities come, you just gotta take them. So unfortunately, well, fortunately, that's gonna be changing soon. Now I do wanna say before I get started on this breakdown, prices could vary, you know, depending on the mods on your vehicle and whatnot. So for my setup, it's gonna be a little more on the expensive side because my truck is getting boosted. So I'm basically getting it ready to handle that power. So things like the drive shaft install might be a little more expensive for me, opposed to if you're doing a simple conversion, you would keep the stock drive shaft or stall or whatever you plan on doing. But other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. I will have the links to all the parts I'm about to show you in the description, just in case you guys wanna go ahead and check those out. So let's go ahead and start with none other, the 4L80 itself. I guess depending on your area, wherever you buy it, a shop, offer up, whatever, the price could vary. A stock one on offer up usually runs, at least in my area, anywhere from 600 to $1,000. Like I said, I was able to get lucky with mine. The owner wasn't too sure of the condition, so he sold it to me for 400. But as we were opening it up, we were able to find out that it was in very clean condition. It had actually been recently rebuilt by someone else, but those were all stock internals. I installed high performance internals on mine to handle the boost and the power. So this transmission should be good for more or less about 700 horsepower. Now the rebuild kit, depending on which one you get, mine was about 250 for a basic one. If you get a very high horsepower one, I know those kits run anywhere from four to $500. So like I said earlier, it just depends on your application. And the HD2 kit itself is only about $120. As well with the transmission, you wanna make sure you get your oil feed lines and your dipstick. But as far as the transmission, that is pretty much it. So next up, you're gonna have your flex plate. Get your little buddy out of here. There we go. So the flex plate, I know more or less, they're all pretty much the same for the 4L80, except if you have a 6.0 engine. As you can see right there, there's a space for mine. My truck is actually a 5.3 LM7. So on mine, it's gonna require that spacer. A 4.8 would also require that spacer. I know there's a few 6.0 models that will require not having that spacer right there. So just make sure you know which one you're getting before you make this purchase. So essentially what it will be is, imagine not having this spacer right here and it would be essentially just flat. But more or less a flex plate like this will run you about 100 to $150. All right, next up we have our wiring harness for that 4060 the 4L80 plug. Let me go ahead and tell you guys about these real quick. As you can see on mine, mine is from ICT Billet, but here's the issue. So for this one, I paid about $110. It's a little more on the pricier side, but with those cheaper Chinese ones, you're looking at about $30, $40. But from what I've heard, you pay what you get for. When you buy those cheaper harnesses, I've heard people always have issues with those cheaper ones. The pins are almost always wrong. People often have to take them apart rewire it and do all that. So if you want to avoid the headache, 
buy a good one from ICT or the ones from Michigan Motorsports are good as well. I only ordered this one because it had faster shipping. So there you have it. If you want a good reliable harness, you're gonna spend about 90 to $120. Or if you wanna go ahead and risk it with the Chinese ones, 30 to $40. Now for our next part, that's gonna be our cross member that you see right here. This is gonna be the new one that you need in order to hold up that 4080 under your truck. Now I've heard of people using the current existing one. They just weld a custom bracket onto it, but if you wanna avoid all that headache, I mean, this was only about 40, 50 bucks. If you wanna avoid the work, just buy one of these. You can get them all over the place, eBay, Amazon. I got this one on eBay for about 40 bucks. Should be fine. Quality seems pretty well. That should get the job done, no problem at all. With all that said, there's only two items left that I don't have here, but I have a reason behind that. So I'll go ahead and start with the first one, and that's gonna be the drive shaft. Like I said earlier, if you're simply doing a 4L80 conversion, you're not trying to beef it up, make it stronger and all that, or if you're not building a street truck, race truck or whatnot, you're more than likely just gonna use the stock drive shaft with the 4L80 yokes, and then you should be good. I heard some people doing that and it does work, but in my case that I'm making a street truck, race truck, whatever you wanna call it, I am gonna need a beefier drive shaft. Now with the drive shaft, in most scenarios, it's always gonna be custom made. You can't really buy them pre-made just because I know the height of your truck, the width or whatever, that drive shaft size could vary. So in most cases, you're just gonna get a custom one made. So mine is currently at the shop being made. For mine, I paid about 750 for it. That was the cheapest one I was able to find in my area, which is the Los Angeles area. I called a few other drive shaft shops. My quotes were from 750 to $1,000. Now, the reason you want to upgrade that is because on these stock drive shafts, they're known to explode anything over 100 miles per hour. So although they can handle the torque and the power, they can't really handle the speed. So that's pretty much why you have to upgrade your drive shaft if you're doing a race build, street build, or whatnot. That's pretty much all you need to do the 4L80 conversion on a single cab like this. Just those few items and you should be good to go. I will be doing that installation here very soon. So like I said, I just wanted to show you guys an easy breakdown of everything you need for the conversion. So now you guys know the next step is to actually do the installation. There you have it. I'll do a quick little overview on everything that you need. You also have your oil feed lines, which are dipstick, your adapter harness that's gonna allow you to plug from the 4L60 to the 4L80, your flex plate, and your cross member that's gonna hold up that 4L80. And the two other items that I mentioned earlier, guys, your stall and your drive shaft, like I said, those could really depend on and on the direction of your build. That sums up a quick video on pretty much everything that you need. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna be installing this here very soon. So if you guys wanna go ahead and see that process, stay tuned guys. What should I do with that 4L60, man? You guys let me know. Should I save it? Maybe do a build on it? I've heard that people are able to build those 4L60s to hold pretty good power, but at the end of the day, it still is a 4L60. And we got the vent, man. I know I said this is my daily. You guys know from all the cars around here, man. We gotta do at least something to the vent performance-wise. That'll still keep it reliable. So you guys know I got something coming for the vet soon. I'll be making a video on that. Just to spice up things a little bit. fellas there you have it though man just a quick breakdown of what you need for the 4l60 to the 4l80 swap just a nice informational video you guys know what's coming next man we're gonna get that installed into the single cab man man bro show them the box show them the box i said it before fellas you know all of you that participated in the last giveaway it was a lot of people that were supporting so i felt like it was only right that we went ahead and do another giveaway man i'll be revealing what it is in the next few days so make sure you stay tuned for that man but that being said that's pretty much it man like, comment, and subscribe to the boy. I'm going to see y'all in the next video, man.